Hi, Rhett. How's it going? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Very good. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what it is that Listing Loop does and a little bit maybe around the business model? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess Listing Loop, we primarily focus, we're a marketplace for pre-market and off-market properties. So for those who are wondering what pre-market, off-market properties, our definition definition is a pre-market property is a property that is listed for sale. So there's been a real estate agent appointed. The authority has been signed to sell the property. And typically there is a 7, 14, even up to a 21 day gap here in Australia where a property is being prepared for market. And that includes photography, floor plans, videos, signboards, you know, copy for the ad to get it online, et cetera. Now that's valuable time. You can actually sell a property, especially for a real estate agent that they can transact, especially when the property is matched the right buyers. So that's our sort of definition of pre-market. Off-market properties is a market that's always existed. It's typically um, very much driven from previously from sellers that are usually high net worth, celebrities, um, people that really just demand like a discreet selling, um, selling process. It could be someone going through a, a divorce where they don't want all their neighbours and friends knowing that they're selling. They want to be able to quietly move on to the next property that they're looking to buy without everyone or without all the bells and whistles. So... Um, but, you know, pre-market, off-market, we've we've centralised it, we've made it easier for consumers to access it, we've made a platform for agents to be able to discreetly but widely at the same time um, advertise those properties under those, you know, conditions that those sellers are looking for. Okay. Um, and I guess the, the business model is uh, the same, well, the same as you guys, you pay to list, the vendor pays to list or is that, is that correct? Well, yes and no. So in Australia, we're unlike any other market in the world. So um, typically here in Australia, the vendor pays for the advertising via the real estate agent. So vendor pays for photography. The vendor pays, pays for the, uh, the, the floor plans, the signboards. Um, they even pay for the, the online ads, you know, through the major portals. And it's very, very expensive. In fact, we're actually here in Australia, the most expensive market in the world per capita to advertise property properties online so some listings costs in a major portal depending on what package an agent is on could be up to five thousand dollars for a 45 to 60 day listing massive and that's not on success so when it came to develop listing loop everything we did was like how can we do it differently i didn't want to be known as what we call a a me three or a me four portal so uh, you know i think most people watching this uh this this video will be able to say you know Um, we'll understand that we've got realestate.com as the number one market in, you know, marketplace in the country for real estate and then followed by domain. Both of those are substantial businesses, but one thing they focus on as opposed to us, they focus on, on, on market listings. So the market, the listings that are widely available, but we focus on the off market. So that was sort of really important for our business model because we wanted to have a reason why would a consumer come to listing loop as opposed to those sites where they've been marketed to to go to for the last 20 plus years so we have different inventory and a different experience and everything we do is like how can we push the boundaries and do it differently and do something that they're not doing so we we also offer as another what i call usp unique selling proposition is that we are the first real estate marketplace in australia to offer a pure success based no sale no charge advertising model And to do that, we had to create our entire, you know, unique IP tech stack. Um, We put a patent on it as well. Um, So we've created everything from ground up to be able to offer that. So the agents can now go to a vendor and say, you know what, let's push that expensive upfront advertising aside. Let's work a no sale, no charge off market campaign through listing loop. Okay. So, so quite different to what else is on the market in Australia. Okay. Um, Absolutely. Could you maybe tell us a bit about your background in the industry? Am I right in thinking you've got a background in online classifieds? I am. Yeah, I certainly have. So I've been in the industry since 2007. So I originally founded a real estate portal back in, as I said, 07. Uh, wasn't from as a lot of startups start from the home garage. It's home office that started from. But I was very fortunate in 2009 that business was acquired by Australia's largest online auto marketplace, carsales.com.au group. So they're now um, got assets across you know, many different countries. They acquired the business in 09 and then I went along with it to run that business for them for right up until mid 2016. 
uh, where I actually on-sold the business for them again. So I've been in the space for a very long time. I also looked after some of their dealer products as well. So the truck sales, caravan camping sales. So I was representing at, in the end, 10 brands inclusive. So dealer as well as uh, property, but property was always my passion. I love it. I live and breathe it. And, um, and, and as I said, I ended up on selling it for car sales to its current owner, um, you know, back in 2000, that trans- transaction happened in 2017. So I've um, been in the space for a long time. I've also done a few other small plays. I did a, a lot of consulting for a utility connections business for the real estate industry, which is now becoming very quickly the largest uh, player in the industry as well. So yeah, been around for a while. Okay. And what was it about this particular, I say niche, um, that, that kind of attracted you? How big is the market that you're potentially addressing with this idea yeah. in Australia? Great question. So we do approximately, and it, it's up and down because here in Australia, like many other countries around the world, we're in and out of lockdowns. So it, it does affect the property cycle. We're going through a large boom, however, we are for property values, but we are seeing pro- you know listing volumes down. But we, um, um, we traditionally, the off-market space represents 20% of transactions, transactions across the country. So we do around 450 to 475,000 transactions a year. So we're talking nearly 90, 100,000 transactions are done pre-market, off-market, but no one had an easy to access, you know, platform or marketplace for consumers to access them. Prior to us, a consumer, a buyer would have to go, and knock on the doors of all the real estate agencies. So if there was 10 in the local area that they're after, they would have to go and ask, you know, can you add me to the database? Can you let me know when a property like this comes on the market? Because I want to buy it first before everyone else, et cetera. So it's a very clunky system. So we've centralized that. We've put everything behind login. So we're still protecting the agent and the seller's data. So if there's ever any price changes or any information to do with that listing, you won't find it out in Google because it's all behind login. For a consumer to access any of the listings, they have to do two steps uh, of verification with an email address as well as a, a valid mobile phone or cell phone for those overseas um, as well. So, And then we obviously get the details. But what that also allows us is to understand who our users and consumers and buyers are. We know, So we have a really deep understanding knowing who they are, what type of property they're looking for, their frequency of engagement in certain types of properties. We know when they inquire. We know when they buy a property. We know how much they pay for it. And that's all within our net, within our platform. So it's we're very data-driven, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, so you mentioned there that obviously your, the properties on Listing Loop aren't on Google because it's all behind a login. Um, what are the channels that you use to, to grow traffic or to grow market share in yeah. that case? Because obviously yeah, for, for a question. standard portal they're really trying to, the SEO aspect is, is really big. Yeah, correct. So um, yeah, SEO is actually a hard one for us because everything's behind login. So you can't obviously um, create specific property profile pages. So we have to find other ways to acquire it. And when I set out to do this business, uh, set up this marketplace, I did, again, as I said earlier, I didn't want it to be a me three, but I also didn't want to build a marketplace that could be squashed by another player with more money and resource and didn't rely on having to spend tens of millions of dollars per annum to actually get eyeballs to the site, to actually be able to commercialize and grow grow the baseline. So we thought, let's really push the boundaries again and let's create a complete another USP in it. And we actually created a really unique buyer referral system where actually real estate agents can refer a buyer to listing loop. As long as they're not already in the platform, they can accept the invitation so it covers all the privacy requirements. And then when that buyer purchases a property from any agency anywhere in Australia, we actually share our advertising fee with the agent who actually invited the buyer. So what we've actually found is we now have buyers coming to the system from obviously basic Google searches. We've got AdWords, we've got social media campaigns, all that sort of jazz that everyone else has. But we also have this really unique um, model where we're getting a lot of referrals from real estate agents, property developers, mortgage brokers, conveyances, you know, solicitors, um, accountants, the whole lot. So it's allowing us to actually get buyers in in a unique way. Okay. Um, so I spoke to um, a company, uh, the founder of a company that's broadly speaking quite similar to Listing Loop um, a couple of weeks ago from the Netherlands. And 
um, they, what they kind of said about first time buyers is that they would let first time buyers register and maybe they'd let a few kind of look at properties, but not too many. They didn't want too many first time buyers joining because it yeah. kind of dilutes the whole ecosystem. What's uh, what's listing loops policy around first time buyers? Is there a concern that there might be too many joining or, or is it not so no. not such an issue? No, the big thing we focus on and it'll sort of come tie into that question around first home buyers is we focus on quality of buyers. So a lot of open portals out there, really, but what they go and brag, the number they brag on is about, oh, we get this many viewers. We get 12 million viewers a month, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about viewers. We care about buyers and the quality of the buyers that are coming into the system. Now, because they have to register, an unqualified buyer won't typically want to put two points of verification in to be able to see these properties. They'll drop off because they're window shoppers. So for us, by having that behind the login, we're actually getting good, better quality, whether they're a first home buyer, investor, or an owner occupier upgrade or whatever it may be. But there's no, at this stage as at where our business cycle is, there's no exact split on, you know, what's higher or not. So we've done many, many surveys and data collection about, you know, what type of buyers are purchasing properties. But at the moment, because of all the COVID and lockdowns that we're experiencing across Australia, it's, it's up and down. So at the moment, there is a huge boom for first home buyers because there's very large, substantial government grants helping first home buyers get into the market. So for us, you know, an, any agent or seller, they're happy to sell to a first home buyer because at the end of the day, money's really cheap here in Australia. We've got interest rates at around 2%, unheard of, you know? So it's, it's really cheap. So people are now paying $100,000 or $200,000 more because the weekly payments or the monthly payments aren't that much because the interest rates are so low. Okay. Um, and what has the reaction of agents been to to your business model? I would imagine that they're, they're keen to promote anything that kind of um, greases the wheels of the system and improves transaction numbers. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Oh, absolutely. But also because coming back to the very early comment I made about the cost of advertising here in Australia, you know, agents, what we've found is over the years, agents' commissions and the percentage of the, they're charging is actually dropping here in Australia. But what's increasing is the cost of advertising, which is mostly driven from the major portals. So what we've found is because when they're going into appraise a home and talk to a vendor, you know, depending on the skill set of the agent, they can't ever they can't negotiate the cost of advertising because the cost of advertising might be ten thousand dollars combined. They can't they can't afford it because that has to be paid to the supplier. But one thing they can negotiate on is their commission. So because they've got no movement on, on, the, on the advertising, what happens is the commission gets dropped or, and so forth. So we're actually protecting the agent's commission by coming out with a, a pure no sale and no charge model. But also we're the flip of, again, of another a traditional portal where a traditional portal, you, you know, a user has to, have, has to discover a property where with listing loop, we're actually about matching. It's about putting relevant properties in front of the relevant buyers as fast as possible with FOMO. So it's the opposite. We again, it's we're looking at the norm, going, okay, you've got a lot of a lot of mainstream portals out there. They've got a lot of them have got great features. How can we do it very, very different in every way? Okay, um, kind of on that theme, uh, a lot of property portals that I've spoken to around the world, a lot of people who know about property portals kind of see the quality of lead as the new big challenge in the industry. People can brag about traffic and they can brag about number of leads and that that's what they are doing. And the quality is being diluted. So with that in mind, um, do you think that we'll maybe see more real estate marketplaces around the world where users have to register to see listings simply because there are so many window shoppers who give time-wasting leads? 100%, without a doubt. And because we make them register, we've created a full AI framework. So we can start to sort of understand through their movements and predictive search and other things. We can understand who, what type of users are using, you know, uh, in our site and so forth and get a better quality lead and then use also third-party data matching. Are they finance approved? Are they not? Oh, okay, this is a high quality buyer. You can't do that when they're just on an open portal without behind login because all you've got, you're basing it on is sort of traffic data. So it's, it's a lot more challenging. So I think whilst it is harder to get a registered buyer into a system to look at a property, the reward down the pathway is, is much greater. 
And we've really found that through listing lupus more so in the last 18 months. So we're seeing like in, in last 12 months, we're seeing nearly a thousand percent and it's a big number, a thousand percent, a thousand percent growth in registered buyers. And that's because we've now started to perfect how it's happening. Like, and we didn't, we didn't get it right when we launched like any other startup, constantly reviewing, you know, where you're getting drop-offs and sign-ups and, you know, colors of buttons like everyone else. But we've, we've really got that right. And what we also do is we go one step further with our no sale, no charge advertising model. We back ourselves and people, I've had people in many interviews go, you're crazy. What are you doing this for? You, you, should, you might be losing revenue for your business, but we, a property might sell on our platform, but we still have to deliver a minimum 15 leads to the agent for us to get out, paid our fee. And people go, why? It's because we want to back ourselves and make sure we're delivering value to our clients. Because if we're not delivering value to our clients, yes, we can get an ad up online, but they won't stick around. They won't continue to pay us. They won't continue to put listings on. We'll just become another, oh, that portal gave it a go. So we're here for the long term to build a sustainable, it's like a very large sustainable business. And that's why we, we're seriously about backing ourselves with those leads. Okay. Um, final question is kind of a devil's advocate, open-ended one to finish for you. Um, I recently yeah. wrote an opinion piece um, where I kind of said, that maybe uh, this trend towards um, gated property listings might not be the best thing for, for fair housing and fair housing yeah. all around the world is, um, is kind of uh, in, in many places it's getting worse. Um, is there an argument that says that, that keeping this, this stock to just a few in the no buyers might be um, as a trend, maybe not the best thing for fair housing, or is that not a fair comment? No, I don't think it's a fair comment because anyone can go to register on our, for our portal. I don't know about the other portals around the world, but for our portal, you can be a celebrity or you could be the average Joe and you can still go and register as long as you've got a valid email address and mobile phone number. You can still get access. So what we're actually doing is we're bringing access to off-market properties to the average Joe, to the everyday person, the everyday Australian, where previously it was like only the, the celebrities of the high net worth. It's very much changed. And we're even seeing that change now on the types of properties that are advertised where it used to be, you know, properties worth millions of dollars. We're seeing properties advertised for 700,000, 500,000 advertised and being sold and transacted off market. So now I, I, I think it just becomes that, that comment would only go against us is, you know, if the portal wasn't really, was restricting the type of person that was getting access, which we're not. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Rhett, <laughs> thanks very much for talking to us. Um, yeah. Am I right in thinking you guys just closed the funding round, so I'm sure we'll be hearing more, more about you uh, in the not-too-distant future? We sure did. We've got lots happening and new products and features rolling out literally every 48 hours at the moment. We're um, on a massive ramp up. Ramp up. All right, perfect. Uh, well, yeah, I look, look forward to hearing your news uh, as Excellent. you go. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you.